Today we are talking about how to write a strong MBA application. Okay, so there are many aspects to it. So you may have a great profile, but if you don't know how to project it, if you don't know how to portray it, you know, then you will not get admission. So the components of the application, you know, so that's your opportunity. Those are the opportunity for you to showcase your profile, showcase your strengths. And there's a there's a, a particular way of doing it. You know, you have to uh, play smart. You have to take, you know, decisions regarding, you know, what to write about, what not to write about. So this session is going to be particularly about that. So just I'm assuming that by now all of you know the admissions criteria. If not, then a very quick uh, review, review. Your exam scores GMAT, TOEFL, you know, that's the standardized test. Academic record is one of the criteria. Academic record means bachelor's degree and beyond. So your class 9th, 10th, 11th marks or 12th marks, they don't count, right? Only your bachelor's degree and anything that you have done additional, right? If you have a master's degree or if you have a CA, CFA degree or if you have done post- uh, you know, postgraduate uh, diploma courses, anything higher than bachelor's degree and bachelor's degree. That only that's uh, counted, you know, in academic record. Uh, the GMAT score and the academic record, these two are viewed together by universities as one component, as a single component. So together, these give an indication to the university whether you will be able to cope with the curriculum or not. So one of this, so it's just, uh, you know, just means that one of these should be very high. Your academic record is something you cannot go back and change, obviously, but luckily your GMAT score you can. Another advantage of GMAT is that you can take it multiple times. So in the first attempt, if you do not get a score that, uh, that you think you deserve, you can take another shot at it, right? So uh, moreover, GMAT is going to be the most recent thing. Your academics are in the past, you know, for some students, academics are actually too much into the past, you know, I'll, I'll, you know maybe eight, nine, ten years into the past. So for you, GMAT score becomes even more important. That is the most recent, you know, uh, thing that you are going to take. Uh, another, uh, uh, another significant, uh, you know, another um, massive significance of the GMAT score is that in the entire list of admissions criteria, this is the only standardized component. What I mean is that, you know, so uh, if I uh, just say that my bachelor's degree percentage is 70%, so you will not know whether it is good or bad. You will have to ask a lot of questions to me, like uh, what is uh, my, what did I do my bachelor's degree in? Uh, what was the, you know, topper in my university, uh, etc, etc. If I say that my bachelor's degree percentage is 55%, you cannot jump to the conclusion that my bachelor's degree is bad, you know. Maybe uh, my I did my uh, bachelor's degree in, you know, English uh, honors. And even at 55%, you know, for English honors, I can be the topper in my university. So, uh, academic record, just by numbers, there is no way to know whether it is good or bad. Therefore, this is that's not a standardized component. I cannot compare somebody's 55% directly with somebody's 70%. I will need a lot of other information, you know, to do the comparison. Even then, the comparison is not going to be uh, that simple. Uh, work experience, extracurricular activities, these are again not directly comparable, right? The only directly comparable thing in your profile is going to be a GMAT score. So when somebody says, I have 600 and somebody else says, I have 650. So uh, 650 is higher than 600. End of story. It does not matter where you took the exam. It does not matter when you took the exam, right? So uh, the directly comparable component of your application is the GMAT score. Therefore, it is very important. You know? So uh, universities get applications from students all across the world. There will be students from India, from Japan, from Africa, from you know Australia, New Zealand, from all across the world. So the uh, first level of comparison, you know, remains the GMAT score. So uh, they, uh, a 600 from, uh, let's say, uh, somebody from Nigeria is equivalent from a 600 score from India. 600 means 600, you know, so it's, 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 um, it's absolute. Therefore, it's very important for you to get a decent GMAT score. 
another important uh, thing about the uh, GMAT exam is that you know um, GMAT score not necessarily exam the GMAT score is that Indians tend to score uh, very high on the GMAT exam the average uh, GMAT score of Indians you know is like uh, five uh, um, a little more than 550 and it is now pretty high you know uh, as compared to other countries therefore you know Indian students if somebody from Nepal is getting admission with a 600 in a particular college an Indian student to get admission in the same university would probably need a 670 680 because Indian students, their average GMAT score itself is so very high. So that's another thing you need to keep on keep in mind. Right? So these are the admissions criteria. Now, uh, see these are numbers. GMAT score is a number. Academic record is a number. You can't do much about it, right? Now, rest of it, your work experience and your extracurricular activity. So these two things. This all this depends on how you write how how you are going to present it, right? And where do you present it? Where do you present yourself as a? Let's say you are a very good student, or you are a very accomplished professional, or you you have very strong extracurricular activities. So where do you where do you uh, present all this information in your essays? And your recommenders would need to corroborate some portion of it in the letters of recommendation. So this basically, you know, this is these are the documents, these are the things where you will have to that you will use, you know, portray to portray your profile. Right. So this basically, you know, uh, what the admissions criteria are. Okay. So we have other sessions. Uh, we have other uh, webin we have conducted other webinars where we talk in detail about extracurricular activities. We talk in detail about work experience. You know, we talk in detail about the GMAT. So you can refer to those previous webinars, right? Uh, today we'll just talk about how to portray your profile in the best possible manner. Okay. Any questions till now? So, uh, Bablu, your question is how about scholarship? So I don't know what the question is. Uh, so we have a separate uh, session, uh, you know, on scholarship as well, with the recording of which is available in the in the in the playlist that I sent you. So if you need extensive scholarship specific information, you can view that uh, webinar recording. Now, um, Aroshish, your question is, uh, explain the academic record significance. So academic record, that means your, um, your grades after your bachelor's degree. So it's very important to establish a history. See, to be able to cope with an MBA curriculum, you know, they, you will, you may not be able to do it if you do not uh, if you do not have a certain amount of ability let's say okay so uh, these two the GMAT score plus the academic record combined you know gives the university an idea about whether you will be able to cope the cope with the curriculum or not see there are a lot of people in the world who are very uh, we are not good in studies who will probably not get a good GMAT score but extremely bright okay uh, very bright and intelligent but these students will also not be able to do well in the MBA program because MBA program also involves, you know, uh, taking exams and passing, passing the exams, right? So universities do not want students who are extremely intelligent, but bad students and bad test takers, right? Ultimately, the st as international students, at least you will have to pass your exams, pass your MBA exams. So the uh, significance of the academic record is that the universities want to know whether uh, you will be able to cope with the curriculum or not. Now, the student, now the uh, if you are a university topper, if you are extremely good, so that is a definitely a you know a, a very strong profile, right? You know that that shows that you have the experience of you know you have done it in the past that you are a good student, you know. So, uh, uh, but if your academic record is not as good as uh, it uh, should have been, you can still compensate for it by getting a high GMAT score. There are a couple of more questions. Um, does amount of work experience in years affects okay as i said you know please uh, uh go through the you know we have done an extensive webinar session on work experience you know uh, more than one hour video is available on our playlist right uh if you all of you if you if you scroll this uh, chat window up you will find two webinar two like you know youtube links they are the youtube playlist right so you can find there so bablu to answer your question you can just uh, scroll this chat window up to find the links 
मेहर योर क्वेश्चन इज प्रोफाइल फॉर एम बी ए वर्सेज प्रोफाइल ऑफ एम आई एम एनी मेजर डिफरेंस येस सी एम आई एम इज ए डिग्री फॉर विच यू डू नॉट नीड एनी काइंड ऑफ वर्क एक्सपीरियंस और यू नो एनी काइंड ऑफ या एनी काइंड ऑफ इंडस्ट्री एक्सपोजर सो देयर इज वेटेड गिवेन टू एकेडमिक्स इज फार हायर चिन्मय योर क्वेश्चन इज इफ आई विश टू एनरोल नेक्स्ट सेप्टेम्बर uh how should i set a date for appearing the gmat exam so i'm i'm coming to that right the next uh, i mean we have a slide on that as well uh vinod please uh, any those of you who are asking questions about uh, work experience you know please refer to the work experience webinar video that we have already conducted so uh nick you know hindi literature is fine you know of course any that it, it seems a little unique so that's good um aditya question is i have pgdm degree with 7.5 pointers whereas b so that's what i told you you know so there is universities are not going to compare directly right they will they will just see how you have done in comparison to your peer group that's more important uh megna lot of uh, lot of business schools in india except gmat you will find the entire list on mba.com website mba.com is the uh official uh, gmat website you will find the list of business schools which accept gmat score so um adarsh you know uh please uh, scroll up i have posted two links at the very beginning of this session i have posted two uh, links one of them is a webinar series on uh, specifically for additional points for gmat verbal and one of them is a is a playlist that contains you know videos um, of our, uh webinars like this one So Mukul I I think I already answered your question regarding profile for MBA versus profile for MIM okay I already explained that question So uh first of all the most you know while writing your application first of all while starting your essays or bef even before starting your uh application you should know your profile you know Now this seems a little you know vague so I'll let me elaborate you know identify the USPs your of your application identify the usps of your profile so uh now if you are let's say applying uh for uh, for an mba program you know and uh, currently you are a software engineer from you know from india so that definitely is not a usp because most students you know most students most applicants mba applicants from india are software engineers right so uh, make a list make a list of your profile in order in decreasing order of the uniqueness you know how unique is that feature now let's say you are a software engineer you can't change that but maybe you were uh, you have been you know sent abroad uh, for on site you know by your company two three times you know so then among in your work experience that is what you should be highlighting the fact that you were chosen over other people over your peers so that probably should be you know highlighted or let's say your uh, but uh, again, if you are doctor now you know then that is definitely a unique point because not many uh, doctors from india apply for mba programs right so identify what is the what are the unique things or what are the best things about your profile just writing down stuff or just saying okay i am this i am that does not help you know you have to write you have to highlight the best features you know the best stuff in your application in your profile now if you are for example if you are an average student no then no point in talking about your academics right on the other hand if you are a university topper or if you are like you know top 3 in your university or you won some you know gold medal or npsc scholarship something something really strong in your academics then definitely you should talk about it so uh, similarly uh, if your uh, uh, extracurricular activities are very generic you hardly have any extracurricular activities as opposed to somebody you know who um, who can paint very well or who has uh, won some you know uh, like medals or represented uh, you know your school or your college in some competitions or if you are national level something so now now you should be talking about your extracurricular activities so uh, you should you know your profile the best however you should take very uh, you should be very cautious about what you are going to write if you are if the stuff that you are going to write is about the generic portion of your profile then it does not help so highlight your usps right so in your essays your essays are going to be questions about what are your biggest accomplishments or 
you know of, give examples of you know leadership potential etc etc so there write about the about it those things in your profile that set you apart you no know? those things in your profile that other applicants may not have you know, every person has every every applicant has one or two such things right so the best the first thing that you should be doing even before deciding what to write in your essays lors etc is uh, make this list make a list of all your you know everything in your profile in decreasing order of uniqueness no you will have a very fair very very uh, all very accurate idea about what things not to write about you know so the things that are in your bottom you know uh, 20% probably you should not talk about them you should not write about them in your applications you know in your essays and lors right in your online application of course you will be providing all the details but your the content of your essays and lors should not be based on the bottom 20% of your things you know of your profile which are not that unique another interesting bit is that you know tell the universities what they want to hear by this what i mean is that you know if you are applying to stanford let's say you know so for this you have to uh, you know research your university very well now stanford what what uh, what's the what does stanford boast of you know stanford boasts of the number of entrepreneurs that they have produced right uh, stanford is known for producing entrepreneurs you no know, St stanford's um, you know the buzzwords around the stanford university is like your uh, entrepreneurship you know so if you have done anything entrepreneurial right it need uh, entrepreneurship does not mean starting your own business only by the way even within uh, let's say you are working for microsoft and you started some a uh, new uh, a new project or maybe you started some new csr activity also anything that showcases the entrepreneurial spirit in you that's what you should be writing in the essays of stanford university right i mean uh, even let's say in in college you know you started a club with some of your some you know debate club with your friends or in school you started some uh, i don't know some uh, uh some nature club with your friends so any any at any point of your life if you have if you have displayed any uh, entrepreneurial spirit you know any any uh, incident where you have taken initiative and got others involved you know, so that's what you should be highlighting in your in your application to stanford on the other hand now let's say you are applying to a university such as you know um such as a uh, duke or a uh, or darden or carnegie mellon no these universities are known for having a very very uh, a strong quantitative focused curriculum you know that you know you need to be really really bright and intelligent to be you know do uh, to do well in their mba program so if you are applying to these kind of universities so uh, in your applications then you need to write about your academic achievements if any or even doing a work experience and work profile if you have excelled in any uh, any kind of analytics analytical role or any kind of projects where you had to do a lot of uh, you know data driven decision making etc you know that's what you should be highlighting in applications to these universities so a lot of you know st in, uh, students don't do this you know they don't do this they have they usually have a you know standard um, set of essays career goals essays or a, a standard kind of essays and they and they you know um, use the same content to apply to different types of universities which is which is not very wise you know you have to make the best of your applications you have to put in more than 200% uh, effort in each of your applications so the same set of essays that you are you go if you're going to use for a uh, stanford let's say uh, you know if you're planning to apply uh, to a uh, darden or a duke or harvard then it will not help because these universities they have or or what you no know, they have different uh, there are different things that they boast of they stand for different things if you spend some time on the website you know you will see uh, you know you will see those buzzwords right or i mean all of this research is already available right so you you will you have to now customize your essays you no know? to uh, fit the universities right so that's what i mean by tell the universities what they want to hear now uh, small things matter let's say you want to apply to a university whose class size is very small let's say a uh, yale university or a uh, tuck university you know top universities but the class size is extremely small 
तो हियर द मेन फोकस हैज टू बी डाइवर्सिटी नो दिज कॉलेजेस दे हैव एब्सोल्युटली नो डर्थ ऑफ गुड एप्लीकेंट्स दे विल गेट टन्स एंड टन्स ऑफ एप्लीकेशंस दे आर गोइंग टू पिक द मोस्ट डाइवर्स वंस बिकॉज़ दे आई मीन ऑफ कोर्स यू हैव टू बी गुड दैट गोस विदाउट सेइंग बट टू एप्लीकेंट्स एग्जैक्टली सेम प्रोफाइल सो इफ यू इफ यू are well, if you are going to add more diversity to the class if your profile is more unique definitely you will get you know admission so when you are applying to specifically for small class size universities in addition to your accomplishments and achievements you have to highlight your uniqueness right and now this uniqueness can be in any form it need not be only through your work experience etc it can be your family background as well you know um, small things like uh, let's say you grew up in a family where your you know father uh, has a transferable job so you uh, you attended let's say six uh, schools you know or you attended uh, i i had a student who uh, from cl- uh, from uh, class 1 to class 12 actually went to 13 schools right so he used this you know as you uh, know for as content for one of his essays saying that you know that it helped him uh, be more adaptable you know uh, uh, more uh, sensitive to other people's you know uh, sensibilities and uh, how it made him more mature etc uh, so, etc et so Uh, so the uniqueness in your profile need not come only from your achievements or accomplishments or uh, work experience or you know uh, academic record it can also come from your family upbringing or your life experiences you know most mba students they do not even think about their life experiences they just think very data oriented okay i have got x percentage i have got you know uh, x years of work experience oh my designation is this blah 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 but you have to look at your life experiences as well um for instance we had a student once you know who uh, got into isb with uh, 580 gmat score 580 gmat score isb is completely kind of unheard of right but you know her ex- uh, life experiences were really you know uh, you know showcased her courage you know showcased her uh, leadership potential so uh, so uh, that carried a lot of weight and now i am not going to you know i will not be able to assess what your life uh, experiences have been but you now you you are the best judge of it you know if you have um, um, really shown ownership or maturity or if you have o- overcome you know uh, really difficult times you know and still excel you know so these are things that should also be written in your applications your applications need not be only numbers and data please understand that you know uh, students usually ignore their life experiences completely they just talk about you know oh i got this much marks blah 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 but your a major part of who you are uh, is actually your life experiences right so uh another thing is that you know attend university events right so um, if you if you have let's say some university in mind let's say you want to go to wharton you know or you want to go to purdue just go to the website and create your application id it's for free you no know? just start the application form it's free so you will keep getting notifications or you will keep getting emails about what their events are going to be and where some of them are physical events you know held in uh, big cities like you know delhi bombay bangalore etc some of them are webinars right but do attend the university events now when you attend the university events first of all uh, give your full name you know and uh, express your interest in applying to the university and when you then write your essays finally you can say that you know that one of the uh, reasons why um, i uh, i considered applying to this university is my interaction with mr xyz you know who had conducted this event so uh, to that helps in applications as well so don't forget this you know the uh, you're only applying for only like you know preparing for gmat and taking the gmat exam is not enough you have to do a lot of stuff you have to do a lot of additional stuff you know to make it to uh, the top universities i mean if you want to apply to a top 30 40 universities you have to you have to put in a lot of extra effort in in a, in a, you know uh, in various uh, in uh, various uh, aspects right of course if you are if you do not if you don't want to apply to a top 50 university then it's a different story obviously but if you are still at the at the uh, at the um, uh, part of your mba journey where you are preparing for your gmat exam it does not hurt you know to uh, to target or to aim for or to aspire for the you know top 50 universities right okay 
so next is you know customize your applications customize your essays and letters of recommendation for each universities uh, i mean i have seen in you students trying to apply to five six colleges with the same set of essays only like minor modifications just change in the word limit etc that does not help you know uh, you need to understand that uh, you know at the application stage you know this these universities they have like 12 to 15 percent acceptance rate that means of the uh, 100 applications applicants that are going to uh, apply of the 100 applications that they receive only 15 will be considered you know maybe uh, they will give out admissions call uh, i mean interview call to around uh, 20 25 but finally only 15 will get admission so you need to do whatever it takes to make your application stand out so you have to customize now customization actually goes to this point when you customize you are actually customizing keeping in mind that you are making your profile or you are presenting those aspects of your profile that that <coughs> uh, that uh, are in sync with the university's core principles or the things that universe the, that that university now one <coughs> very important part of the application strategy is to when to apply i i hope you are aware of the different rounds of admission round one round two etc so i i hope you are aware of that so those of you if you're not aware so the in business schools the applications it's not that uh, they don't have a they don't have just one deadline right so they will have different deadlines you know round one deadline <coughs> round two deadline right uh, round three deadline so uh, so they will have different deadlines so let's say the round one deadline is october one so what happens is that all the applications that they had probably received till october one they will be they will be assessed in one go and then uh, the next round is let's say is december one then from october uh, one to uh, december one whatever applications they receive they are going to then uh, review them in one go so that's why they are different rounds you know this this application uh, process you know that this uh, admission process is different from applying for master's degrees or phd degrees right uh, for mba the universities always have different rounds now there is a question about you know which uh, round should you apply to now <coughs> a lot of people will say that apply in round one uh, or uh, you know or apply in round two but it's not as simple as that <coughs> um, you should first look at you know how many rounds does a university have and what is their admission policy now for example isb has two rounds of admission everybody i'm assuming is aware of that so isb has two rounds of admission and their admission policy is that they take equal number of students in both rounds so they fill 50 percent of their seats in first round and the remaining 50% in their second round. So what, how it happens is that, so uh, before even uh, starting the assessment process of the applications, they have some internal criteria, right? So, uh, so after they receive the uh, applications for round one, they assess the applicants. And if somebody is like, you know, uh, like way above those internal criteria, they give the admission offer. If somebody is, let's say, way below the, um, the those criteria, then they give them rejections. And if somebody is, let's say, uh, just at par or just a little above or little below the those internal criteria, then they put them on wait list. They are not going to give them uh, direct admission or direct rejection. They will put them on wait list. Then they get the applications for the second round. <coughs> and similarly, they will then have in internal cutoffs, of course. So those of them who are like, you know, uh, way above. So they are, you know, cut, you know, they are given admission offers. And uh, people who are like way below the internal, uh, um, the internal criteria, they are given rejections. And the people in the mid zone, you know, people who barely meet the criteria or people who are just slightly above the criteria or slightly below the criteria, they are then put in a uh, wait list. <coughs> After that, they take the wait waitlisted candidates from round one, waitlisted uh, candidates from round two, and then see who are who are meeting the internal criteria, uh, criteria right? So, so that's how the admission process works for ISP, for instance, right? Similarly, uh, 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 with now, uh, with people, 
universities who have multiple admission rounds, same thing happens. They have an internal criteria right at the beginning of the admission uh, process. And uh, they, uh, if they uh, receive applicants who are way above the internal criteria, they get admission offers. People who are way below, they are given uh, rejections and the people on the border are given, you know, uh, are waitlisted. Waitlisted candidates from all the rounds are then, uh, at the end of the all the rounds are assessed, right? So every round, <coughs> some candidates are put on waitlist and all the waitlisted candidates are then assessed together towards the end, right? So uh, <coughs> uh, we know your question is, do universities provide feedback about application rejection? Uh, they usually don't. They will just say that uh, because of the, they have the standard language say that because of the uh, stiff competition or <coughs> because um, our, of a strong applicant pool, uh, we will not, uh, we regret to inform that uh, you have not been given the admission offer. So they will just use standard language like, like that. You can try writing to them and finding out, but uh, they, they usually, they will not tell you what the problem is. However, uh, as I said in the, my initial slide, if you remember, if you have uh, by attending, you know, uh, at, by attending the uh, university events, you know, uh, if you have been able to make some make relationships, build relationships with uh, with some of the admissions and uh, some of the university uh, the people, then they might actually give you uh, a reason like that uh, retake your GMAT or uh, <coughs> apply for a different program, then they might, you know, give you uh, give you a feedback, but uh, usually they don't, right? Now, um, in uh, we were talking about rounds of admission. Asian business schools they have two rounds of, you know, Asian business schools they have two rounds of admission, right? <coughs> and it is highly recommended that you apply in round one. Asian business schools for Indian students at least. Uh, uh, they are pretty cost effective you know a lot of students apply you know to the asian business schools in fact uh, students from you know uh, korea uh, japan china they apply to the asian business schools you know so and they usually get higher uh, gmat scores than in than average indian students so so if you are applying to the asian business schools then apply in round one you know to improve to maximize your chances of admission now i'm talking about when i say asian business schools i don't mean isp of course isb isb's policy is that they will take the, exactly the same number of students in round one and round two okay but other asian business schools uh you know they, their policy they, do, they don't specify so if they get uh, strong applicants in round one they will they may even fill up 60 to 70 percent of the seats in round one itself you know therefore if I apply to the other Asian business schools, like your, you know, the business schools in Singapore or Hong Kong or China, you know, that uh, make sure that you apply in round one. Okay. <coughs> European business schools now, whether it is Oxford or Cambridge or INSEAD, HCC Paris, the European business schools, the ones in Spain, IE, IESC, whatever, the, the uh, European business schools, they have four to five rounds of application admission so they have far more rounds right so so there you can apply even till the th third round you know it is okay to apply till the third round and uh, the uh, first round usually happens around september october uh, second round happens around uh, january december january and uh, third round happens in uh, no feb march is right so it is okay to apply in round three also European MBA programs start, you know, late September or beginning of October. So it's perfectly fine, right? So you have, that is why you can apply even in, uh, as an international student, it is okay for you to apply even in third round. You know, you are not going to get, uh, you know, uh, your chances of admission are not that drastically hampered if you apply in third round to European business schools. Now, American and Canadian business schools, US and Canada, here they usually have three uh, rounds of admission at most four right no not more than four now in these business schools uh if you apply in the third round you are you are a little late you know for international students there is usually not enough time to process to give you i20s or to give you process your visa etc so in um in 
in Canadian and American business schools apply by the second round. The first round happens, you know, September, October, November, and uh, second round happens December, January. So, you know, so that's usually the uh, timeline. So, America, uh, American and Canadian business schools apply by the second round. Third round, uh, it's not that you will always get rejected, but it's a huge, huge risk, you know. European business schools is perfectly fine if you apply in third round also, but do try to apply in the second round, you know. Uh, uh, in Asian business schools, first round, you know, anything beyond first round, I, in, especially in colleges like, you know, NUS, NTU, I actually have not seen many Indians getting admission in second round. So apply in the first round. Now, advantage of Asian business schools, you know, their round one itself happens in December, uh, January. So, even if you, uh, so round one of Asian business schools happened in December, January, you know, mid of December, January beginning, that is when their first round will be. So, uh, and the second round is usually in March, right? So, make sure that, you know, when you plan your applications, just first decide which country you want to go to, or you may even want to apply to a mix of business schools, you know couple of them in the US, couple of them in um, Canada, couple of them in Europe, that's perfectly fine. Students usually apply to five to six business schools, you know, so and then decide and then spread out your applications. For instance, you know, uh, if you are applying to an Asian business school, then your round one itself will happen in December, January. So definitely you'll have to apply here. Uh, if you're applying to an American business school, it uh, try to apply in round one as far as possible. If that is not, po if you, if you have already missed a round one, then you can you target the round two. Okay. Now spread your applications in different rounds. <coughs> what this means is that let's say you are applying to only American and Canadian universities only. Okay. You are not applying to any other. Uh, you are not applying to European or Asian business schools. Asian business schools, so it's a no-brainer because you don't have any option. You, have, you apply in round one. That's a no-brainer. Uh, now uh, there is, of course, definite advantage in applying in round one. You know, but you cannot apply in all the business schools in round one. Each application takes, you know, at least ten to, you know, at least seven to ten days to write a good application. You have to budget seven to ten days for each application. Okay, so it's not possible for you to apply in all the universities in round uh, round one. So how you should, uh, uh, how you should make your application strategy is that in in round one, apply uh, apply to three or four colleges or maybe you know definitely at least three colleges apply in round one. One of them should be a safe university, right? So two, uh, I mean, uh, two of them should be, you know, uh, let's say uh, difficult, where it is like, you know, <coughs> for your profile, the dream university, let's say, and one of them should be a, uh, your safety bet, right? So now, if you if you get an admission, if you get an interview call from your dream university, you know, or uh, then you know. What you in the second round then you know second round then you can you can be a little more ambitious you can then this you can apply to even more dream colleges right uh, on the other hand if you get a rejection from a safety college itself in round one then in round two uh, change your list of universities you might then probably want to be a little less ambitious in round two so if you go with this mix of colleges then you can which colleges to apply to in round two you will be able to plan that out you know and the it should not happen that you apply to all the colleges in round one and you get all rejections or uh, you get all admissions you know getting all admission offers is also and that means that uh, probably you were not that ambitious right so uh, to make the best of your uh, of your applications just you have to plan out your uh, uh, spread out your applications like this right understood this point See, some of you may be able to apply to three, four colleges in round one perfectly fine. Even then, you should definitely apply to one safe college in your round, in your first round. Uh, if you get admission from your safe round, great. You know, at least you will have one college admission offer in hand, right? Then in the next rounds, you can be, you can apply a little bit stress free, right? On the other hand, if you get rejected from your safety college itself, then there's some drastic planning, drastic, you know, strategizing required for your round two applications, round two university selections. Mihir, your question is, MIM Europe has more than four rounds starting from January. Uh, see, MIM usually is, is not in the same category as MBA, right? So for 
MIM, they usually in you know, a two to three rounds. So you need to check, you know. You but uh, they don't start from January. They start the good colleges like your HCC Paris or Oxford. You know, they start earlier. They don't start in January. But from the other colleges, you know, uh, other colleges they might start in January. So you it will uh, if you are uh, just talk to your center manager who can put you in touch with your with a counselor who can give you the exact information about the university deadlines for MIM programs in Europe, right? Okay. So, uh, did everybody understand this, you know, this thing in about which colleges to apply to, you know, how to spread out your applications? Don't make the mistake of applying to all your colleges in round one, you know. Uh, you will not be able to give enough time to your applications. So, uh, <coughs> uh, Arun, how it works is that, um, let's say the application deadline of a university is November 15th. And you apply on November 15th, right? So uh, uh, first, they will look at the components of your application that we talked about in the first slide. Then they will give you an interview call, right? So uh, the interview call, the results uh, will pro will probably you know uh, come in another couple of weeks. So if the November 15th is the deadline, then by Jan 1st, you you will come to know whether you have got admission or not. Now. This university whose deadline, round one deadline is November 15, let's say, and it's round two deadline if it is December 30 or maybe December 25. So you may not get, you may not get the admission result, you know, by the second round, right? But you will definitely, you will definitely know about your interview call. Now, based on that interview call, you can decide for round two, which colleges. So even if you get an interview call, you know that, you know, that okay, so it's it's fine that you are not your chances of getting rejection is done. You know, uh, it's not it's 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 better than getting directly, uh, far better than getting directly rejected. Okay, so interview call means that you have a fifty percent chance of getting admission or fifty percent chance of getting rejection, right? So based on the interview call itself, so from your dream university, if you have got the interview call, then you can at least rest assured that okay, <coughs> you are not you know your university selection is not that wrong, you know. And then you can stick with your original plan. If you get a direct um, uh, rejection from your dream university, I mean, without interview call, if you get a direct rejection, right? Then, you know, you for your round two now, you it might help to be a little less ambitious. Okay. Of course, you know, for, you know, for all these discussions, all this, you know, you feel free to have you no know, discussion with your admissions counselor. For deadlines, you know, all these deadlines, uh, the, the, the deadlines are available on our website. This is the link. You, you will find the deadlines of the top 100 business schools in the world. For other programs, programs other than MBA, you know, MIM, etc., you can ask your admissions counselor. Uh, in case you want very uh, specific information, like somebody asked whether what kind of profile is needed for NCR. So if you need some very specific information like this, you know, then uh, you should, uh, you, sh you can email your questions along with your CV to this email ID. Okay. 